Hello everybody, um, today we're going to take a look at uh, some of the same objects we were using with Rhino and Prusa Slicer and we're going to export them uh, in the same fashion for um, utilizing another slicing program called Cura and it is uh, uh, fairly similar in its function uh, but the interface is uh, quite a bit different looking um, so first thing we'll do as usual uh, so we'll start with this calibration cube and we'll check our units they are in millimeters so we'll take that file and we will export it select that Enter, and we're going to take a look at our Prusa test folder. We'll make a new folder that is Cura test. We'll go inside that, and once again, if you'll remember, we'll be looking for the STL file type, and we'll give this a name. So cube, we'll just tack on Cura at the end, STL, we'll say save, and once again we'll be keeping that uh, 0.5 millimeters. <clears throat> if this was a, a more complicated um, object, of course, that number would actually go down uh, to give us more detail. So we'll say OK and make sure binary is uh, checked and we'll say OK. Alright, so then off to Cura we'll take a look at importing that file so uh, this is your general interface uh, you've got a printer here and, and this it, it's important to note that this software um, couples specifically with uh, three of our printers uh, they'll be listed in this upright up right hand corner here uh, Lulzbot Mini and Lulzbot Taz so the Taz is a much larger version it's our biggest printer uh, it's the Taz 6 and it has a, about an 11 by 11 inch cubic uh, print area so if you're looking to print larger objects, this, this printer is a pretty good option um, to look at. So we'll just switch back to the mini since we're printing fairly moderate sized uh, to small sized objects. And uh, it's also important to note that these printers um, take a 3 millimeter filament or a 2.85 millimeter, I think it's marketed as whereas the uh, Prusa printers take a 1.75 millimeter diameter filament. So let's just quick import that object. So we're looking for uh, open files and navigate to our desktop and we'll look for our folder, secure test, cube, Cura and open that. And as you can see, the imports. And uh, this program does a couple of things um, immediately uh, that I don't particularly um, like all that much. Um, specifically, it uh, automatically slices your model and every time you make a change it auto slices your model which um, can get uh, a little bit um, time consuming so if you want to make several changes and and then slice it uh, you can change that option so uh, you can either get to it through this menu and manage printers um, or I believe you can get through it uh, through 
uh, preferences menu and then configure Cura. So you would go in here or you could get to it through here, manage printers, and it is under the general settings. So what you're looking at is slicing behavior and you want to uncheck slice automatically. So that allows you to make several changes and then decide when you want to slice your model. So close that up. Um, this does also have similar kind of positioning uh, controls as to um, Prusa. So you can scale, rotate, mirror, uh, per model settings, or if you want to divide settings, different infills or um, things like that per model. So you can change that individually uh, if you have multiple things on the build plate. Uh, support blocker and custom supports are similar to support enforcers and support blockers. And then you just have multiply object there. Um, specifically the settings we'll be looking at are up in this kind of panel here. Uh, of course you want to make sure you have the right printer selected similar to using uh, Prusa and you want to make sure you have the correct material selected so once again I'm typically printing with PLA or PETG those are generally uh, fairly easy to print with PLA being the easiest to print with um, so I haven't had uh, really any difference in print, print quality uh, depending on which um, PLA I selected and uh, your profile um, this is the kind of like presets so you have high detail standard and high speed uh, typically I'm on the standard detail and other things that you might want to look at are listed here so if you have an object that has support like we'll go over you can drop that down, select this, and then you get a similar menu to Prusa in terms of adjusting um, our support. We don't need that for this object. Okay, so once I am ready, I've got my object selected. Um, I'm just going to click prepare so this slices the current job click that slicing it so we can check out the layer view we'll just take a look at the infill here so you can kind of already see that our infill is pretty dense so let's adjust that. Oh yeah, so our infill density is at 50%, which is way too high. So let's drop that down to 10. And then of course we can choose our pattern. So we have similar gyroid lines, uh, you know, all the similar options that any slicer would have. So as we made those changes, we can get it prepare again. We'll slice our object and there we have our uh, layer view there. You can also see something here. Um, we've got a fair amount of perimeters around the outside and uh, depending on your object and the strength you need uh, you could increase those or decrease those and that would be under something called shell um, wall thickness so our wall line count is at two, or wall thickness is at two millimeters, line count is at four, um, and you can adjust that based on, you know, maybe what the part's being used for, um, whether it's mechanical or purely sculptural, uh, and that can 
you know, save you time and plastic, uh, depending on what you want to do. So both both Prusa and Kira allow you to adjust those settings. So that gives us a good idea of what we're going to kind of look at or what we're looking at in terms of an object ready to go. Um, so the next thing that you want to do once you're done slicing and you're happy the way your object looks is to export it as a 3MF file. So you'll want to save your project and that should give us a 3MF file. Okay, so I'm going to save that in Kira test. So Lulzbot Mini LM cube Kira Kira project 3MF. That's great. Um, and one thing to note is when you are sending me these files, you'll uh, want to add, of course, like your name and uh, of course we've got a description of the file and you'll also want to add uh, the date as well. It's like today is 7 14 20 and That'll give me a, a good idea of who the file is coming from and who I need to contact if there's something, if there's a problem with the file, something like that. Let's click save on that. Like so. <clears throat> okay, so file saved. So if I were to, if Kira were to crash or, um, you know, something were to happen to the computer I'm working on, I would be able to open Kira back up. And I'd be able to open recent files, or open files, and grab our project, open that. And all of our settings should be the same. So we've got wall count, you know, quality is standard still. Um, yeah, so everything should be the same. me to take a look at. Great. So that is a basic introduction to Kira. Um, so once again, you know, the most important things to remember as far as model preparation are, you know, millimeters. Make sure you're looking at your fill density. You know, check out your wall thickness if you need to. And, uh, you know, Generating a naming convention for your files uh, can be really important, not just for you to keep track of them, but for me to keep track of the files that are coming to me to be put on the printer. Um, so there we go. Uh, see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot.